guys, it is Laurie of Laurie's Sewing. It is Monday, March the 1st of 2021, and I am so happy that we are in March. Last time we did a review, random review number four, on this product. It's been sitting in my sewing room because I had to go out of town right after I did that. And I haven't moved it out of the way, but you know I'm not going to throw that away. And I'm not even going to bother to return it because I would be able to use it for something at some point. So let's see, I made a mask. And then we used uh, the Clotilda Scallop Edge Sewing Gauge that I was trying to also use as a uh, hot hammer to make this little scallop edge and it has really inspired me to think about using the scallop edge uh, sewing gauge for future projects. So we're working on the little boys bubble. This is the McCall's 3063 pattern. In the last video, just a quick recap, we had done the front pants or the bubble romper, whatever you want to call it, and this is the back. The guide in the instructions does not show the back lining up the way mine does, but I prefer the way mine does. It's neater. It has a more tidy appearance. The instructions, goodness, everything has just been sort of flung to the to the corners over here. The outside on the guide looks like this. Now I have not been able to read ahead so I don't know if that is the way it's supposed to look. If it is, I'm not going to do it this way because I don't like the way that looks. I think I can just put a uh, snap maybe two snaps in this section on this right side facing and that should be absolutely fine. It lines up just fine, it looks fine, and I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'm going to do the same thing on the white version of this that I'm doing. View F will be made from white Imperial Batiste. And I plan to do the back exactly the same. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to discuss is this ribbon right here. I went with this Grain Scallop Edge ribbon instead of the half inch, and this is half inch, but I did not do a double-faced satin ribbon um, for I, I just feel like this is a little bit more um, little boy and I think it would be really cute as the bow tie at the neck. I doubt that I'm going to be making a bonnet. I wouldn't use this for a bonnet because it, it doesn't tie if you bring one end to the next these little scallop edges catch on each other and make it difficult to tie, you know, tie, actually tie into a bow. I wanted to kind of bring you up to date with our project. Everything is fine. However, I decided that instead of trying to match the blue Imperial Batiste by Speckler Vogel, with a similar fabric and color in a pre-made bias tape, I am going to make my own. And how would I do that? Well, I had to order another yard of fabric. So a few of the things that I had originally thought I would be doing have changed, clearly. So here's the number one change is this is not going to be uh, dealt with in today's video. Primarily because I don't have that fabric yet. I think it's supposed to arrive 
the 4th. And today is March the 1st of 2021. I will kind of walk you through the next few steps, although I won't be, basically I won't be doing any of them yet. So, if you recall, we left off with the basted front piece. So we've got our little tucks in the front. This is the front seam right here. And these are the tucks. They are created by matching a line on this side to a line on this side. And then, and we're moving away from this center seam. And this is the front. This is the back. And again, if you recall, the back is made the same way with the exception being that you do have a placket or a opening in the back. That being said, the other thing I wanted to point out is that when you get this pattern and you get to this point, you're going to notice that these instructions are not that intuitive the drawings here are more helpful. Having gone back and looked at it and looked at it and looked at it, uh, I, I know what it is that we need to do. And that is, this needs to be stitched instead of cut. It needs to be stitched at an angle, then cut, and then you can push this point through and you'll have a little faced point. And that is what will pop out on the left side and create that little extra piece for, I'm assuming, stability. That's the only reason. I can't imagine that you would really want it to look like that. I think that's clunky. But moving on, I, I the other thing that I need to tell you is Having decided that I'm going to um, make my own bias binding for the blue, I've decided that unless it just looks ridiculous, I'm also going to use blue bias binding for the white version of this, basically the same outfit. So this is what I am currently working on in the blue, and I have the white fabric that I will be doing version F in. I am going to take the Pearl Cotton 8, color number 794, and fill the pin tucks on the front of the bodice. So they will be filled tucks in this color, which will shadow through that white and I thought, since I have purchased another yard of fabric, this color, I think it would be really cute to do the bias trim in this color on the white one, just to, for contrast. So rather than purchase another yard of white Imperial Batiste to create the white bias binding, I think I'll have enough with that yard of fabric to create the bias binding for both out of blue. The other thing is I have plenty of snaps for both. Then, if you are at this stage and want to move forward and have your bias binding, let's see what we're supposed to do. The bias trim will go along this edge, which is the center front crotch area and then this edge, which is the center back crotch area. So you will be using a bias for both of these. Well, today we're gonna to go ahead and cut out the Imperial Batiste that is white for the version F of this. I'm kind of anxious to get both of these baby outfits pretty much done so that I can start on the baby blanket and get the entire set, these two outfits and then the little baby blanket, uh, ready to go. So let me go grab that fabric and I'll be right back. I don't want to mark up my white Imperial Batiste, but I am going to do a couple of tests 
using the, the marking devices that I have. This is a water erasable pen. This is uh, just a clover yellow and I have a pale yellow and then I have a more vibrant yellow that I always seem to have a hard time keeping lead in. It just wants to break off for some reason. So I just generally end up using this one. And then the other version or the other way that I can mark with ink is with friction. So I have a friction pen and I have let me see what this is. This might be pink ink. Let's see. No, this is a silver uh, heat heat erase. It might be a little bit more appropriate on white than the friction. So, okay, and then Chocopel. Mm, where did it go? There it is. Okay, so those are the, the versions that I have. Okay, so this is supposed to be erasable. I'm going to use the clover pencil to kind of whisk this away, and that worked pretty well. There is still some blue. It's very evident that it was marked with blue. Don't know if you can see it, but it's there. Okay. And obviously the yellow clover is also supposed to be removable by this little brush so definitely can still see some yellow and I'll be completely honest I don't like what this brush is doing to the fabric it's fuzzing it up I think if I had to mark and erase and mark and erase it would just it's turning the fabric into lint, and I don't like that. So this is not an option for me. Okay, so this one is water erasable. I will go get uh, some water. In fact, I have some in here. This one is heat erase. So I'm going to grab my iron, which is hot, and see what happens when I hit it with, um, with the heat from the iron. And we'll also check on the water erase. All right, so there it is, and it has not erased at all. It's still there, and my iron is hot. Yeah, it's not leaving. Boy, I'm glad I checked. Can you imagine? They claim that it's heat erase ink, and it's not. <laughs> Okay, and here's my water, and here's the right there, okay? All right, in the water we go. And it is completely gone. So we'll wrap it around kind of at an angle so I can get the whole thing on there like so and now I know that it is not H-E ink okay. this disappeared in less than 60 seconds and this is what it looks like it's just blue with a white cap and a white end cap it says water erasable pen Japan on here let's see there we go. Okay. Perfect. 
Now I know that you can also get the purple version which is Air Erase. The only problem with Air Erase is you start your project, you mark your, your project where you need it to be marked, and then you have to stop sewing and you come back the next day, it, the ink is gone. So I don't know that I would want to take a chance like that. Now the one thing to keep in mind, I'm not making a bonnet. So where it says view F rompers and bonnet, there are bonnet pieces within this layout right here that I will not be using. So this is, I'm, it's really easy to just change out what you need to change out. This line right here is the original to the pattern and I slid over a quarter of an inch and drew the blue another quarter another quarter I had to ignore this line that was pre-printed I've got the X's drawn on the second set is one two three four five so this one right here I will need to draw three or four X's on I'm going to bring the camera around to my sewing machine so I can show you how to load your machine to get these pin tucks uh, corded so you'll have that cording underneath your pin tuck. It will give my fabric a shadow of this pretty blue pearl cotton. It's a beautiful effect. Okay. So when I come back, that's what we're going to take care of. All right, so I don't know if you can tell. You really can't see much of anything as far as these lines go. But this is where the last set ends. And there was a second set right here on this side. And I just took a damp piece of my press cloth. I didn't use a paper towel. And it just erased. As it turns out, I am going to need a bit more of the Imperial Batiste Blue, which I've already ordered to create now not only the bias binding but the leg uh, bands as well. And in the process of doing this, I love the way the blue looks on this white, and I've decided that around the collar, I am going to do a little tiny bit of piping on the outer edge of the collar in blue. I think that would be really cute. And of course the leg bands I've decided are also going to be blue. I think the top and the bottom, you know, it'll pull it together. If the leg bands are blue and there's a blue trim around the collar, it'll look really, really cute with the blue shadow corded 
pin tucks. So in order to create the pin tucks, I have to change my sewing machine needle to a twin needle. I'm going to use the Schmetz, uh, the 2.080, or if you want to call it the 2080, you can. It is 130-705HZWI. It's a very common needle, so if you go to any of the regular sewing stores, maybe even Walmart in their sewing section, if your Walmart sells fabric and sewing notions, you might be able to find a, sewing, a twin needle. Um, make sure it will fit your sewing machine. Whoa. And um, I'll show you how if you don't have a secondary post for a second spool of thread, I will show you how you can create something to use. Okay, and then the second thing that we will be doing is figuring out how to load the pearl cotton. If you happen to have a sewing machine foot that has a channel in the lower part of it, like this buttonhole foot has this channel right here, and I think piece number or foot number five does, but I don't like to just sew with that one. This one also is perfect, number 35 for a Bernina. It has, you know, a channel on the bottom that this uh, cord can ride along. Uh, 31 is absolutely perfect, and in fact, this is the foot that I'm going to be using. And number eight pearl cotton in color number 794, and a Schmetz 2080 sewing machine twin needle. I'm going to use Guterman 100% polyester thread. Hey guys, I wanted to put a mail opening on the end of this video because these are the products that I'm going to be using for my next round of sewing projects. So we'll start with this one right here. I'm so excited about this. I'm looking forward to spring and spring sewing and all just kinds of fun stuff. This I ordered all of this from Amazon and on the front of this envelope it says open carefully so I'm trying to open carefully I was looking for something with frills so view F view C view D and view B and view E all have a ruffled trim this one I think is just super precious as is this one. This is a full apron and this is a half apron. Yay! Alright, and this this is how this fabric arrived. Literally like something had just decided to snack on this bag. I don't know what the fabric looks like. I don't think it was damaged, but until I really open and check, I won't know. Oh, pretty. Alright, did it get damaged? No, it looks like it managed to escape. Alright, so here is this. How pretty. It is, um, it feels like linen. I don't think it is. I'll try to remember to uh, drop the specs in the description box below this video. Oh, it feels so soft and pretty, and I want to see what it looks like opened out. Oh, I love it. So I ordered a yard, and it is folded weirdly. It's a little bit more than a yard. Whoever cut it was very generous. Um, which is fine with me. 
and I'll be able to use it um, for the apron. I am going to pre-wash this. And then here's this one. It's so pretty. It's Michael Miller, and it is, uh, oops, summer, but it's spelled, oh my gosh, oh, it feels so good. It's spelled S-O-M-M-E-R by Sarah Jane for Michael Miller Fabrics. You guys, this is like, oh, I love it. Love, love, love it. So the reason I chose this is I wanted something for Easter, but I wanted something that could disguise itself. In other words, if I didn't want to use it strictly for Easter, then I wouldn't have to use it strictly for Easter. But as you can see, it has little bunny rabbits. However, it could easily be available to me almost any time during the spring and summer. Thank you so much for watching. I, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I would love to have you join us. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.